Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In our previous class, this will be the continuation of uh, pulmonary infections. If you can recollect, I mentioned there are seven subcategories of uh, pulmonary infections. In the last class, we spoke about community acquired typical pneumonia and second one community acquired sorry this is typical pneumonia and this is atypical pneumonia so we know about these two entities one more important uh, point that i would like to highlight is when this infection these are the one of the most common type of pulmonary infections and pneumonia what you should remember in this category is because it is acquired and occurring in the community, the causative organisms will be same for all the infected persons. Same causative organisms. Okay, all the individuals will have a similar kind of organisms causing pulmonary infections. Today, we will see the third and one of the most important category is nosocomial pneumonias. The other name for nosocomial pneumonia is hospital acquired pneumonia. What is this hospital acquired pneumonia? Hospital acquired pneumonia. I will give you an example. I am a healthy individual. I am going and admitting in a hospital for some other reason. For example, if you say I met with an accident and my lung function priorly was perfectly fine. After admitting in hospital, I got operated for the fracture. Then after admitting in hospital about 1 to 2 days, 24 to 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, that means within 1 to 2 days, along with my primary fracture, I will get some kind of a pulmonary infections. That we categorize, we call it as nosocomial pneumonias. That means nosocomia by Latin nosocomia or nos it means hospital. These are hospital acquired pneumonias. Why it is important? Why they have separately categorized this, this entity? It is very important because uh, before I uh, go to those things, but three more important uh, words that you should remember is that you can see in the PowerPoint. One is hospital acquired pneumonia that I mentioned you just now, hospital acquired pneumonia. That means any individuals who does not have any kind of a respiratory infection admitting in hospital and after admission of one to two days, you will get pulmonary infections. Those we call it as hospital acquired pneumonia the second subcategory in the same is ventilator associated pneumonia ventilator associated pneumonia see this we call it as vap ventilator associated pneumonia patient who are put on ventilators they are also more prone to develop lung infections so those categories they again called it as ventilator associated pneumonia and in general the most commonly nowadays the terminologies used is health care related associated pneumonia this health care associated pneumonia this we call it as health 
care associated pneumonia so these are the three important subtypes if somebody uses ventilator associated pneumonia you should know what exactly it means healthcare associated pneumonia and hospital acquired pneumonia why we are highlighting or why we are giving more stress for this hospital acquired pneumonia because in the first two category i mentioned the causative organism is same that is single organisms causes multiple infections but in hospital acquired pneumonia hospital acquired pneumonia the causative organisms is usually the mixture of gram positive and gram negative organisms we have gram positive organisms gram negative organisms so you need to treat for both gram positive antibiotics which are sensitive organisms and antibiotics which are sensitive to gram negative organisms second most important thing is pseudomonas infections most of these pseudomonas organisms most of these nosocomial or hospital acquired pneumonias they are infected with pseudomonas it is very dangerous and it is highly virulent it is highly virulent highly virulent that means most of these organisms they are antibiotic resistant they are resistant to normal resistant to normal antibiotics so it is very difficult to treat these patients one more important organisms which causes hospital acquired pneumonia is staphylococcus aureus staph aureus staphylococcus aureus pseudomonas infection staph aureus they are highly virulent organisms they cause more damage to the lung and these are the organisms which causes more prominent lung abscess and these hospital acquired organisms which are present in the hospital they are most commonly resistant to antibiotics and hence it is difficult for the clinicians to treat so improvement may not occur in these patients along with that there is a mixture of both gram positive and gram negative organisms these are all we call it as multi drug resistant organisms multi drug resistant organisms okay what are the key point that we should remember in case of nosocomial or hospital acquired pneumonia one is when the patient is infected in the hospital so hospital acquired pneumonia is one of the most common and the leading cause of death so these patients will have high mortality and morbidity increased mortality one most hospital acquired infection is one of the most common cause of hospital induced death okay second one is when you see the pathogenesis most of these organisms they actually they are inhaled and they are colonized from the tracheobronchial tree or in the mouth okay these are the pathogenic organisms pathogenic organisms which are colonized in the mouth colonized in the mouth or we can say oral cavity and these organisms they later on aspirated into the lung causing damage to the lung that is pneumonia or lung abscess okay and most important is these organisms how to prevent this the how to treat it is very these are the key points very difficult to treat difficult to treat prevention and treatment is difficult prevention and treatment is very difficult in these organisms and what we should importantly we should remember is whenever any patient is admitted in hospital and to prevent hospital acquired pneumonia pneumonia one of the important preventive measures what you can take or you can say that these patient they can have increased or good oral hygiene good oral hygiene if you maintain good oral hygiene you have a less chance of developing hospital acquired pneumonia but still it's again it is very difficult to prevent fine so we know the definition of hospital acquired pneumonia 
what are the organisms causing hospital acquired pneumonia and why they are more important these are all very virulent and multi drug resistant organisms what are the key points that we should remember in nosocomial pneumonias let's see the pathophysiology what exactly happens i'll leave this i will erase community acquired pneumonias i'll keep the heading nosocomial pneumonias nosocomial pneumonias right what happens when you see this all of you know the trachea divides into two main branches okay this is the right main bronchus and this is the left main bronchus when you see the right main bronchus is more in line you can see that in the picture is in more line with the trachea and left main bronchus presents or pre located at little acute angle uh, angle position it's in more angle with the main trachea so whatever you inhale or whatever any foreign body whatever you inhale it will directly goes and lodges in the middle and lower lobe of the right lung so aspiration pneumonia the most common location is right lung middle and lower lobe and you can see that uh, tracheobronchial tree in the picture so after dealing with uh, <coughs> nosocomial pneumonia sorry the next category is what we are talking about aspiration pneumonia the name itself indicates lung infection occurring due to aspiration aspiration may be anything okay if you want to see the pathophysiology what causes aspiration pneumonia it's been very beautifully depicted in the presentation see three important things that you remember one in normal individuals when you are eating or drinking there will be uh, brain and swallowing axis so when you eat or drink the epiglottis will close the trachea and whatever food or drink you take that will go to the uh, esophagus stomach so in any conditions any condition which impairs this uh, process this ultimately leads to ingestion or swallowing of liquids or solids into the trachea instead of going to the uh, uh, esophagus they will enter the trachea they will enter the lungs and causes in secondary infections so what are those conditions any kind of esophageal dysmotility esophageal dysmotility what are the kind of uh, what are all the causes uh, leading to esophageal dysmotility these patients are more prone to develop aspiration pneumonia and any kind of chronic copds they are also more prone to develop aspiration pneumonia any kind of esophageal strictures esophageal strictures where food cannot enter into the uh, esophagus that ultimately enters into the uh, trachea leading to aspiration pneumonia esophageal strictures it can be due to cancer malignancies or any kind of inflammatory strictures important then you have uh, important uh, second category is impaired consciousness impaired consciousness that means this is the patients when any patient having neuromuscular disability neuromuscular disability any patient who are comatose comatose patient any patient who is chronic alcoholic chronic alcoholic patient patient who are on general anesthesia all of you should observe these things uh, in the routine uh, uh, clinicals and uh, this is uh, general anesthesia patients who are putting on general anesthesia anesthesia so this is the patient who are more prone to develop aspiration pneumonia and we have reflux esophagitis reflux gastritis 
reflux gastritis is one condition where the gastric content if you have a stomach the gastric content will go up and ultimately enters into the trachea causing damage to the lung and forming abscess this is reflux is a esophagitis again one of the most common cause of aspiration pneumonia and impaired cough reflex impaired cough or reflex whenever you have a impaired cough reflex you have more chance to develop aspiration pneumonia so these are the important causes that you should remember one any impairment in the swallowing whatever may be the cause the so impairment in the swallowing any impaired consciousness any cause uh, any condition which causes impair impairment in the normal consciousness reflux gastritis reflux esophagitis and impairment of cough reflux so any of them they are patients they are more prone to develop aspiration pneumonia let's see in aspiration once the aspiration any content if enters the trachea which part of the lobe or which part of the lung is most commonly affected i'll go back to anatomy you have a trachea here and right main bronchus and left bronchus this is right bronchus and left bronchus if you see the right bronchus is in more line with the trachea and you have a right lung here left lung here so whatever you ingest or aspirate the foreign body or liquid directly enters to the lower part of the middle lobe or upper part of the lower lobe so in aspiration pneumonia the most common lobes or lungs affected are right lung middle and lower lobe left lung is less commonly involved you can see the anatomic diagram in the picture so what all can cause aspiration pneumonia so aspiration means most of the thing it is from the mouth or from the food okay so you have in the oral cavity oral cavity you have a mixture of both gram positive and gram negative organisms gram positive and gram negative organisms so when you inhale the uh, oral cavity contents you will have a mixture of these two organisms causing pneumonia causing pneumonia and along with that in intoxicated patients other common organisms which causes aspiration pneumonia or staph aureus i told you previously in hospital acquired inf infections staph aureus also it's one of the most common organisms and it is also very virulent organisms and along with that if you have a aspiration the part of the gastric content will also enters into the lungs so gastric content means acid acid it is the more potent uh, chemical which destroy any of the tissues so when you have a aspiration you will have uh, gastric content which contains acid which destroys the lung along with that you have secondary infection of these organisms that's why in most of the aspiration pneumonia patients these patients are more prone to develop lung abscess okay why one is chemical injury destruction and super added infection most commonly infection have both gram positive gram negative organisms if you want to treat aspiration pneumonia we have to treat proper antibiotics which are sensitive for both gram negative and gram negative organisms this is the x-ray you can see this is the x-ray of a patient who went uh, who had a history of aspiration pneumonia all of you can see right lobe is relatively fine except for some haziness in the lower lobe and when you see the uh, sorry left lobe and right lobe when you see you are seeing a thick walled cavity in the lower lobes cavity this is nothing but lung abscess this is lung abscess you still can make out some kind of a fluid here gray white thick wall with some kind of a fluid it is radiologist will say that there is a lung abscess or cavitated lung in the right lower lobe this is the x-ray of a patient who had aspiration pneumonia then how to diagnose this patient let's see detailed clinical history and the clinical scenario of these patients and presence of 
the radiology is sufficient to say that it is aspiration pneumonia. If you still want pathological diagnosis, how it looks? Pathology means both macroscopy and microscopy. <coughs> Microscopy means gross examinations. <coughs> gross. Usually, you will not get a gross lung or lobectomy in aspiration pneumonia unless until it has a severely involved and they have done lobectomy. So, most commonly, you might see these kind of cases in forensic pathology. So, how it looks? So, as I told you previously, the aspiration pneumonia is one of the most common cause of lung abscess formation. When you see the lung, we will see multiple abscess or cavitatory spaces. All of you can see in that presentation, they have multiple cavities of variable size. They may be single, there may be multiple and you will have a thick fibrous rim and you may see some kind of a content or any necrotic content in the lumen. So, all of you can see rest of the lung parenchyma will be normal. The uh, lung parenchyma away from the lesion will be normal. The lung parenchyma which is adjacent here, it depends on the chronicity of the inflammation. So, it, show, it may show consolidation, it may show mild pneumonic like infection, uh, inflammation or it may show diffuse fibrosis depending on the duration. If you take sections from here, microscopic examination from the abscess cavity and the adjacent lung what you can see for the diagnosis of aspiration pneumonia you have to see presence of foreign material foreign material in the alveolar parenchyma along with lot of destructive inflammation of the lung parenchyma in that microscopic picture you can see that you can make out still you can make out the alveolar outlines if you concentrate on septa the septa are congested that means there is an inflammation is going on and when you see the alveoli, alveoli are filled with various type of acute and chronic inflammatory cells. Actually predominantly the acute inflammatory cells, you are seeing some kind of a proteinaceous exudate in some of the alveoli, eosinophilic material what you can see there. Along with that, if you observe there are some foreign material on the upper right corner, you can see those are the foreign material which is present in the lung parenchyma within the inflammatory zone. So, identification of this foreign material most commonly there will be vegetable matters because aspiration whatever they eat it will enter into the lung most commonly you will see vegetable matters. If you see vegetable matters on microscopic examination it is the diagnostic feature of aspiration pneumonia. Okay, There is one more microscopic picture and you can see that arrow is pointing towards some vegetable foreign material lying with dense inflammation of the lung parenchyma causing destruction. So, when you see this, it is the microscopic uh, definition or diagnosis uh, to say it is aspiration pneumonia patients. After aspiration pneumonia, we will uh, see the next category called as necrotizing pneumonia. Necro Necrotizing pneumonia. What is this necrotizing pneumonia? It is general uh, classification. Any kind of a pneumonia, whether it is a community acquired or a hospital acquired or aspiration pneumonia, any pneumonia which causes abundant necrosis of the lung parenchyma, uh, then extensive damage. Extensive damage of the lung parenchyma. We categorize all those categories as necrotizing pneumonia. Why it is important? It is important because certain organisms they are more prone to cause severe damage to the lung parenchyma. So, what are those organisms? One is streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus. Streptococcus pneumoniae. As I previously mentioned, staph aureus. Staph. Or yes, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Nocardia species. So, when you have infection with these organisms, the lung will be severely damaged. 
that's why they categorized as necrotizing pneumonia so these are the pneumonias which again more prone to develop lung abscess okay again you have multiple complications of the lung abscess so how actually it looks when you examine on microscopy if you take sections of a patient who had who had necrotizing pneumonia you will see only necrosis you can see the microscopic picture here you will see only necroinflammatory exudate with extensive damage of the lung parenchyma other than that you cannot find anything if you can do any special stains for bacteria demonstration of the bacteria you can do gram stain for the demonstration of bacteria you will see only complete necrosis nothing else so these categories we call it as necrotizing pneumonia okay then we have a last category of a pneumonia classification that we call it as pneumonia that occurs in immunocompromised individuals immuno compromised individuals pneumonia that is occurring in immunocompromised individuals why it is important this because the organisms which are causing pneumonia in these individuals will not generally cause any kind of a lung infection in a healthy individuals if you demonstrate these organism that means in any patient that means that you have to rule out or extensively investigate for any kind of an immunodeficiency disorders most commonly in india it is retroviral infection hiv infections so what are those organisms which are particularly or commonly occurs in immunocompromised patients one pseudomonas aeruginosa pseudomonas aeruginosa these are the bacteria again the causative organisms can be divided whether it is a bacteria whether it is a fungal or it is a viral so if you want to see the bacteria what are the bacteria pseudomonas bacteria in india or any developing countries most common i think we should mention mycobacterium tuberculosis is the first i'll mention it first to so, mtb mycobacterium tuberculosis is the most common organisms in any kind of immunocompromised states then listeria monocytogenes listeria monocytogenes listeria monocytogenesis pneumophilia so all those bacteria they are most commonly causes lung infections next we have viruses so common viruses are cytomegalovirus cytomegalovirus this is very important this commonly will not cause any kind of infection in healthy or immunocompetent patients when you have cytomegalovirus inclusions in any of uh, the body in any of your body uh, body that means you have immunocompromised states then herpes virus herpes virus infections okay whenever body immunity will low the herpes virus will reactivate next comes the fungus fungi what are the common fungi you have you have uh, candida candida will be present as a normal common cell in many mucosal sites but invasive candida when you see in any of the uh, micro histopathology samples that means it is a immuno compromised state then aspergillus this is the common fungi aspergillus aspergillus species you have cryptococcus cryptococcus then pneumococcal pneum pneumocystis carinae pneumocystis carinae then histoplasma histoplasma so these are the things that you have to mention a uh, category how it is categorized for pneumonia in immunocompromised states there are some so how to identify this thing is we have we have two methods one if the biopsy sa sample is taken for any site any body fluid like sputum or bronchioalveolar lavage sputum or bronchioalveolar lavage or any tissue biopsy tissue biopsy specimens you need to demonstrate these organisms a detailed 
uh, morphology and other characteristic feature of individual organism what i told you in the previous slide there will be you will be dealing those in detail with the microbiology i will just highlight how individual um, the organisms will look like cytomegalovirus how it looks the name itself indicates you can see that picture affected cells will become grossly enlarged and you will see prominent intranuclear eosinophilic inclusions cytomegalo viral inclusions you can see the affected cells they'll become popped up they'll become enlarged then you have aspergillus fungi aspergillus fungi how will you identify they are the thin true septate septate fungus which are branching at acute angle thin true septate fungus with acute angle branching we call it as aspergillus species you have in the center pneumococcus uh, corny pneumonia so these are the silver methanamine stain grocot silver methanamine stain and you have in this side you have candida species these are the spores of the candida and this is the budding yeasts budding yeast forming pseudo hyphal forms you are seeing the yeast form budding yeast forms and also pseudo hyphal forms of candida so candida usually when they are not invasive they will be in yeast forms when they become invasive they become budding and it forms the pseudo hyphae of the candida species again you have special stains showing cryptococcus fungus this is the mucicarmine stain special stains so you can do special stains all these uh, organisms for demonstration the most commonly used special stains are periodic acid shift diastase resistant then grocot silver methanamine stain so, so these are the by doing these stains you can highlight the organism and you can come to a definite diagnosis so this is uh, in this last lecture we'll be completing we'll be completing the lung infections okay all of you go back and read about lung infections.